What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video. And in this video, you will learn about using programming, organizational techniques, and logic components. Organizational techniques. So three techniques you can use to organize a program are pseudocode, flow charting, and sequencing. Each technique will be discussed in the following sections. Pseudocode. So pseudocode is an informal, high-level description of the operating principle of a computer program or other algorithm. It uses the structural conviction conventions of a normal programming language, but is intended for human reading rather than machine learning. The purpose of using pseudocode is that it is easier for people to understand the conventional programming language code. Think of it as an outline or a rough draft for your program. So here's an example of some pseudo code. So you see how it is written in plain English describing exactly what the program is supposed to do. The program is supposed to read the first name of a customer, make the, um, make the first name a proper name, read the last name, read the last name, make the last name a proper name, read the customer's phone number, Print the space, space, last name, go to the next name, repeat the process, continue until all the names are output. So basically, just like I just said earlier, think of it as a rough draft for how a code is supposed to be written and function. Also, the purpose of pseudocode is so that you can help make sure that both programmers and non-programmers agree about what the program's goal and the basics of how the task should be done. So here's an example of a refined pseudocode example after you have consulted with other programmers and managers. So essentially, we took that rough draft and now we're refining it to make it sort of look more like how code might look, depending upon what language you use, of course, to uh, code this thing up. But if you guys want to learn how to write in pseudocode, you can visit the WikiHow page titled How to Write Pseudocode, and it teaches you how to create a pseudocode document for your computer program. Flowchart concept. So a flowchart is a type of diagram that represents a workflow or process. A flowchart can also be defined as a diag diagrammatic representation of an algorithm, a step-by-step -step approach to solving a task. There are many visual diagramming products available to help you visualize your program. Here are some of the traditional flowchart shapes used for programming concepts. So you have when you're out there designing stuff, if you uh, want to represent what a process would be in the chart, you would use the rectangle. A decision will be a diamond. Data will be a parallelogram. Start and end will be a capsule and a database will be represented by the shape of a cylinder. Let's talk about sequence diagram, a sequence diagram in the context of unified modeling language or UML represents object collaboration and is used to define event sequences between objects for a certain outcome. A sequence diagram is an essential component used in processes related to analysis, design and documentation. A sequence diagram can be drawn using visual diagramming software like Visio. Uh, creating a sequence diagram from source code can be useful when discussing a program with non-programmers. Some apps can also convert a diagram into source code. So that is an example of what a sequence diagram looks like. All right, logic components. So branching and looping are the two major types of logic used in programming. <clears throat> Let's talk about branching. So branching involves choosing between options based on one or more variables. And as you can see in the uh, picture here, it uh, should be pretty self-explanatory. So you go to question one, uh, either the question's right or it's not, yes or no, and you just flow down the path until you get to your final destination. Next, we have looping. So to enable code to run as many times as needed until a condition is no longer true, 
you can use a technique called looping. In Java, there are three types of looping. You have a while loop, a for loop, and a do while loop. Other languages have similar looping logic. All right. So you look at this picture here of a traditional loop. Basically, it presents the initial condition or the initial expression. It tests the expression. And if, and if it fails the test, it goes to, I'm assuming, the end. If it passes, then it pretty much repeats the process until it fails the test. A while loop. So in a while loop, the condition is checked at the beginning of the loop. A while loop is a control flow statement that allows code to be executed repeatedly based on a given Boolean condition. So we got the diagram here, start while loop. It tests the expression at the beginning, and if the expression turns out to be false, it'll exit, and if it turns out to be true, it'll just keep repeating itself until somehow this thing magically becomes false. A for loop. In a for loop, the loop starts with the original value and then stops when the termination value is reached using an increment specified in the loop. So pretty much it starts and it might have a condition saying if you reach the value of 20, then the condition will be false and the loop will terminate itself. But until it reaches the value of 20, I think I said 20, right? Until it reaches 20, it'll just keep looping itself over and over until it reaches the number 20 or whatever you determine to be the termination value. And we have a do while loop. A do while loop is similar to a while loop, except that the test is performed at the bottom of the loop instead of at the top. So you got the do while loop. It starts, it starts executing what it's supposed to execute. Then it tests the condition. And if the condition is false, the loop will end. If it's true, it'll keep going around and around until somehow that test condition turns out to be false. All right. So that's a real quick class here, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and get into some of this check on learning. So question number one, pseudo code is what? Is it a program written for a pseudo language compiler? Is it a description of what a computer program needs to do? Is it a translation of machine language? Or is it another name for a flowchart? So what is pseudocode? Correct answer is pseudocode is a description of what a computer program needs to do. So think of it as a rough draft that you are writing out essentially step by step describing how your computer program is supposed to function using plain English. Question number two. Creating a blank from source code can be useful when discussing a program with non-programmers. Would it be an array? Would it be a vector? Would it be a variable? Or would it be a sequence diagram? So creating a blank from source code can be useful when discussing a program with non-programmers. The correct answer would be a sequence diagram. So think of a sequence diagram as you sitting down here talking to your friend, trying to des describe what the program does. And you are literally drawing it out on a piece of paper saying that it's supposed to go from point A to point B to do this, to do this, to do that. You could think of a sequence diagram in those terms. All right. Final question. In a while loop. Where is the condition checked in a while loop? Is it checked at the end of the loop? In the middle? At the beginning? Or con conditions are not checked in a while loop. So where is the condition checked, assuming it has a condition in a while loop? The correct answer is it is checked at the beginning. So remember, in a while loop, it's going to tell you let me go back up to it so you can see let's go to a while loop ladies and gentlemen all right here we go so remember in a while loop is going to start the loop and then it's going to test the expression and if the expression turns out to be false it will terminate the loop if it turns out to be true it'll keep the loop going in a do while loop 
it starts the loop, it begins the execution of the loop, and then after the execution begins, that's when it runs the test condition. And if the test condition is false, it'll end the loop. If the test condition turns out to be true, it'll keep the loop going on and on and on. All right, so that is pretty much our class, ladies and gentlemen. So in summary, we have talked about programming, organizational techniques, and interpreting logic. So if you need more help, you want to get caught up on the latest and greatest, please visit my website, technologyg.com. So you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass your CompTIA IT Fundamentals certification exam. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.